G'day, welcome to this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. My name is Chris Muir and I'm an ADF Product Manager working for Oracle Corporation. In this episode and the next episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, we're going to look at the concepts of system topologies. In this episode, we're going to consider WebLogic Server and the different ways to run the ADF runtimes on top of it. And in the next episode, we're going to look at the broader system topology concepts of, well, when you basically have active-active topologies, active-inactive topologies, where you terminate your security in a system topology, and so on and so forth. So yes, kind of departing from the ADF design and development here, looking at stuff that system administrators are particularly interested in. Now, in this particular episode today, as I said, we're going to look at the ADF runtimes running on top of a WebLogic server. So we're not going to consider Fusion Middleware solutions and all the other parts of a Fusion Middleware solution such as MDS, your security servers and so on. We're still really coming at, coming at it from an ADF perspective, but we want to talk about, well, WebLogic Server and how the different topologies you can configure on WebLogic Server, how ADF can run on top of those. Now, before we actually dive into talking about all these different topologies from a WebLogic Server perspective, we really should go over a quick refresher of WebLogic Server terminology for people who aren't familiar with all the concepts or necessarily what they mean. So let's dive in and have a look at some WebLogic Server terminology. So in terms of WebLogic Server and the managed servers that run underneath it, these will all run on what's called a host. Now, a host isn't necessarily a physical box. In today's computing world, this could also be a virtual machine, but ultimately WebLogic Server doesn't really know about that, it just knows it's running on some sort of operating system and this is what we refer to as the host. Now from there, the managed servers that we're going to set up on WebLogic Server, the managed servers are grouped in something called a domain. And in a way, you can think of a domain as a set of configurations for all the different managed servers that fall under that domain. Now, of course, the managed servers themselves, you can have one to many managed servers, and the managed servers are the part of WebLogic Server that our applications run on. In order to administrate the managed servers and administrate all those managed servers in context of the domain, you typically have another managed server called the admin server. And this admin server is specifically designed to be used by the administrators. It's basically a web console that has the ability to modify all the domain and the managed servers at runtime. Now, when your WebLogic servers go down and come up, in order to automatically start them up, particularly in a clustered environment, you use something called a node manager. And this is responsible for starting the servers on the behalf of the overall domain. For developers, we don't necessarily care too much about the node manager because we'll be starting up the managed servers by ourselves manually. It's worth noting each managed server is a Java virtual machine in its own right. There is no sharing of, J of the JVM or its resources across managed servers. What's significant about this is if you have an application installed on a managed server, and that application is obviously constrained by the resources and contention on the associated Java virtual machine for that managed server, well those contentions will not necessarily be shared with another managed server which has a separate Java virtual machine. Because they are separate JVMs, they are not sharing resources. However, of course, note, behind the scenes, if the network and system administrators have put the managed servers on different virtual machines but the same physical host, then there will be a performance hit at that level. Now, very important to WebLogic Server is the concept of a cluster. And this allows managed servers within the domain, rather than being treated separately, to actually be treated from a high availability aspect as replications of each other. This includes the applications running on those managed servers and their state, such that if one managed server goes down, the state for a particular user of that application has already been shared with a managed server running on another node in the cluster, and the system, that WebLogic server that is, can gracefully switch the user over. All in all, these are the basic concepts of WebLogic Server and the terminology is quite important to get right because all the discussions we're going to have from here, well, it won't make a lot of sense. There's plenty of good guides around on WebLogic Server and its terminology and its architecture and there's a bit.ly link provided here for you to learn more if you need to before pursuing the rest of this episode in context of ADF deployments on WebLogic Server. Okay, now we've got the basic WebLogic Server terminology out of the way, let's consider ADF running on top of WebLogic Server. 
Now let's start with a really simple example that all ADF developers will be familiar with, then use that simple example to look at more complex examples in a moment. So let's first of all consider ADF running on top of the integrated WebLogic server that comes with JDeveloper. So the integrated WebLogic server that comes with JDeveloper already has a domain configured. In addition, it has one machine configured and an admin server configured. Now the admin server, you'll have to remember, is typically used for administrating the domain. But an admin server is a managed server in its own right and can actually run applications. The admin server is an application in its own right too. So for the integrated WebLogic server, Oracle's decided with JDeveloper that it's fine to deploy your ADF applications into the admin server. But you would never do this for a typical production setup. The admin server should be reserved for your system administrators and your other managed servers for your real applications. Now, when you obtain JDeveloper and the integrated WebLogic server, the specific version of JDeveloper that you download, so maybe it's version 11.11.1.1.7.0 or version 12.1.2.0.0, the ADF application itself requires a number of ADF runtimes that match that exact version. And those ADF runtimes will already be installed in the integrated WebLogic server for you. So in this example, we can see that the 12.1.2.0.0 ADF runtimes are already configured in the integrated WebLogic server. Finally, in JDeveloper, when you run your application, essentially it starts the integrated WebLogic server, compiles your application, and then deploys it to that WebLogic server and serves it from that. So in this case, you can see specifically, we have a 12.1.2.0.0 application, ADF application that is, running on top of the ADF runtimes, which are 12.1.2.0.0 as well. Then the rest of the WebLogic server stack. So we can see the integrated WebLogic server is set up to run ADF applications, but it is set up from a developer's perspective. Some of the configurations from the WebLogic server perspective i.e. that we're actually installing applications to the admin server is not something you do from production, but it gives you a footprint for understanding the more complex topologies we're going to come up with now. Now, in terms of the more complex topologies, I guess the next natural step would be consider, hey, mm, rather than running one ADF application on the WebLogic server, what about running multiple applications on the one WebLogic server? What have we got to consider there? Well, let's just stick with our integrated WebLogic server, WebLogic server stack at the moment. So still a single domain, a machine, and the admin server, which is the managed server. And on top of that, we still have our ADF runtime, so 12.1.2.0 runtimes. But notice the runtimes can be actually installed into WebLogic server as shared libraries. So you don't need a set of runtimes per application as such. So in this diagram, we then show that we can store multiple applications all in this case 12.1.2.0.0 applications on top of that WebLogic server stack and particularly again highlight the dependencies between the ADF applications and the ADF runtimes. If the ADF application is a 12.1.2.0.0 application you can't run it with the non 12.1.2.0.0 ADF runtimes it needs to be a matching runtime. Now that's going to open up an interesting issue in the moment, but as we can guess here, the integrated WebLogic server or even our normal application, uh, WebLogic server setups I should say, should allow us, if we desire, to run multiple applications on the same managed server, with obviously the issue of that they will be contending for resources in the JVM and the underlying host. But that's your core. If you don't think the applications are going to use a lot of resources, hey, install as many ADF applications as you want. Now, I've obviously brought up a bit of a contentious issue then because I took such a simplistic example of installing ADF applications that are all running on the same ADF runtime version. What happens if you've got versions of ADF applications that are on different versions of, well, the ADF runtimes? So maybe you've got an 11.1.1.7.0 application and a 12.1.2.0.0 application. What do you do in terms of your WebLogic server topologies then? Well, there's a very important thing to realize about ADF runtimes. The ADF runtime libraries that Oracle typically provides by the Fusion Middleware infrastructure installers. And you typically install the ADF runtimes through something called the JRF template. And that is, the ADF runtimes, the specific version that you have, cannot coexist with other versions of the ADF runtimes on the domain. 
In other words, you can only have one version of the ADF runtimes installed on a domain at any one time. Now, of course, we already know that the ADF applications must be deployed to the domain of the same ADF runtime version. There's no backwards or forwards compatibility between the ADF applications and the ADF runtimes that they run on. They must match. Now you can see what's going to occur here is if you want to maintain multiple ADF applications on different versions, you can see you're going to start creating a lot of WebLogic server infrastructure. Basically, per ADF runtime version and the ADF applications you want to support, you're going to need at least one domain, one machine, and one managed server. And if you want more complex setups, including failover and clusters, you're going to have to multiply this out. But to explain this diagrammatically, say you've got two ADF applications running on 12.1.2.0.0. Yep, they can still run on the same WebLogic server stack, right? And that's the same as previous. But if you also happen to be running an 11.1.1.6.0 application, it cannot exist on the same WebLogic server domain. It needs to exist on a separate domain with a separate admin server machine and the separate ADF runtimes. So at this point of the episode, I can probably hear a bunch of people going, oh, Oracle, why did you do it that way? Now, I'm not going to defend Oracle solution in this case, but what I want to remind you of is the purpose of the ADF Architecture TV channel is to give you the information such that you can design and architect and build your systems with all the knowledge that you need to know in order to well, build the systems right. So with that little knowledge about the ADF runtimes and the limitation around domains, this should give you enough information about planning the configuration and the topologies of your WebLogic servers appropriately. So up to now, we've basically been looking at running multiple ADFs, applications, different versions on WebLogic server and addressing this ADF runtime question. But let's now start to broaden out our understanding of configuring the WebLogic servers and bringing in some of the nuances of configuring WebLogic servers. More best practices and ideals from the WebLogic server camp as opposed to the ADF camp. So one of the first things we need to consider is the admin server and what's typically done with this. Well, one thing to realize with the admin server, again, remember it's a managed server in its own right, it's pretty typical in a WebLogic server environment not to install your ADF applications onto that admin server, but rather create a new managed server on the machine and domain where your ADF runtimes and your ADF applications run. And this one's rather simplistic, there's just one ADF application. But in addition, in a typical production setup, you would have a separate managed server, the admin server. And obviously the admin server is used for administrating the domain and all the other moving parts of the WebLogic server solution in this regards. You might also notice in this particular diagram that the admin server is kind of hollow or opaque. And the reason that is, is it's typically a best practice when the administrator is not administrating the overall WebLogic server to actually suspend or bring that admin server down. And this way, from a security perspective, nobody can get into the admin server and start manipulating the overall WebLogic server. But at this point, we're still in terms of WebLogic server production setups too simplistic. Because one of the true powers of a Java EE server like WebLogic server is its ability to support failover through the concepts of clusters. So in this example here, Notice we've kind of pretty much got the same setup. We've got an admin server that we can bring up and down. And, hmm, okay, maybe not exactly the same setup. We've got two managed servers. Ah, sharing the same ADF runtime library. Now remember again, ADF runtime libraries, the specific version is shared across the domain. And we have two, no, not two applications, but the same application, but two instances of that application running on the different servers. And that is all facilitated via the cluster. The cluster mechanism allows us to have multiple instances of the same application running on multiple managed servers. And through the failover mechanisms that are supported in the cluster, if the application one instance one goes down, because, this, because of the serialization of the state of application one across to the second instance, from the user's perspective, they'll have no idea that the application's gone down. The cluster will take care of all of this for you. 
But there's still a fundamental flaw with this example, and that is the managed servers are all running on the same machine. So it's pretty typical in this sort of setup that the different managed servers of our cluster actually run on separate machines or hosts, and even the admin server, as you can see in this example. So if one of our machines explodes, well, essentially the other machine with the other managed server and the separate instances of our application, which have had the serialized state being pushed to it, well, again, it keeps on running, and this gives us our true failover that we want. So as we move beyond the ADF setup on WebLogic servers and we start to consider the WebLogic server setup itself, we can see there's a lot more that we can actually do. There's a lot of nuances of setting up WebLogic servers in order to support our failover situations, our 24 by 7 situations. Now just remember in this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel, I am an ADF product manager, not a WebLogic server product manager. So I'm obviously not informing you all about WebLogic server and all the things that you need to consider. The WebLogic server, server is a very sophisticated technology and there is plenty of documentation and online collateral for you to learn how to set it up correctly to learn all its nuances. So I really highly recommend that you pursue that and not just rely on the ADF product manager to fill you in on all the details, though I have given you the basics from the ADF perspective today. Now, what we'll be considering in the next episode is still topologies, but we'll be broadening it out from WebLogic Server and considering all the integration points. So that is our databases, our LDAP servers, load balancers, and so on and so forth. So I hope you've enjoyed today's ADF Architecture TV episode, but you will also join us for the next episode where we'll consider the broader picture to fill out your overall, well, I guess your system architecture of your ADF applications. Thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you very soon.